Hi, welcome to my blog Edis English Literature. I am Ardhin Dude. Today we are going to read romantic poet John Keats beautiful poem The Poetry of Art. As you all know, John Keats is a romantic poet and being a romantic, he sees nature in different eyes, the eyes from his heart, not from the physical eyes of carnal beauty, but he sees everything from the soul, from the inner core of his feelings. And that feelings is sometimes sensuous, sometimes artling, sometimes personal, and sometimes a teaching perspective. Now, John Keats is a romantic poet of second generation. The first generation of Wordsworth, Coleridge, and in second generation you will find John Keats, Shelley, and all such younger poets. In John Keats' life, you will find a sorry tales of his own illness as well as his frustrated love affairs and the disease and in front of him, the youth, the birth of In John Keats, you will find a poetry which appeals to our senses. So, in fact, in what's what, he spiritualizes those aspects of uh, nature. In Coldridge, you will find a kind of philosophy. In Selly, you will find a kind of robust revolutionary idealism. But in Keats, you will find the carnal beauty of nature, the sensation, the appeal of senses. In John Keats' beautiful poem, Or to the Night Angle, or Hyperion, in, in, in several of his poems, the appeal of senses, or appeal of beauty and the desires of seeing the nature from or feeling the nature from the core of understanding with that of physical math with that of physical entity is the very aspects of nature so he sees nature in its full circle with the appeal of our body with the appeal of our senses so in John Keats poetry in in John Keats romantic idealism you will find the nature in its full term in its full appeal with the senses, with the colors, with the appeal of smelling, with the, uh, with the cardinal aspects of each and every possible understanding of nature. So, in John Keats, you will find the full circle of the life with the thread of understanding the nature. In fact, there is no way of understanding in nature in separate entity aloof from our appeal to senses. So we cannot feel or we cannot see the beauty of the nature unless we comprehend it through our uh, sensuous appeals. Through our so when John Keats is in search for poetry of art, he obviously is in search for the sounds, is for the, um, the rhythm of nature. The rhythm of nature is a continuous process, endless process, and it like that of a cycle it is sounded everywhere it is the ear of us it is the very notion of us that make a possibility of understanding that music that poetry if one is failure in understanding that then he fails to vary uh, the notion of comprehending the nature so the poetry of art is a continuous never ending ever going process or the musicality or the sounds that the sounds in the nature it is but kids it is but the ideology of kids that has the philosophical arrest of our minds which make an understanding of that music or that make the possibility of comprehending that music the poetry of art is a sonnet and being a sonnet, as you all know, sonnet is a piece of music as it comes from uh, Italian sonata, which means a little sound or a lyrical presentation with some sounds. So, uh, from the Petrarchian, from Dante, it came into English, so then from England, 
uh, from the hand of Sydney, Ward Sari, Pensar, even uh, Shakespeare and all of these has matured the very notion or the very technicality of sonnet writing and later each and every poet had tried its hand in writing sonnets uh, quite a popular literature among the English poets uh, or the poets throughout the world. So it's a sonnet it is divided into two stanzas octave and sestet. In the octave part you will find the musicality that is being represented through gas part in the warm season and in the sestet part you will find the musicality of the cricket the mm, cricket insect that makes a buzzing sound um, so both in summer and winter there are music and in the sestet part there is a volta or the jump of thought uh, so it makes a, a meaningful rendering in that sestet part which tells that the continuity of the music or the natural music is never ending ever flowing spontaneous and spontaneous let's concentrate in the poem and try to decipher its meaning line by line in the octave part it states the poetry of earth is never dead when all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown meat that is the grass of ours. He takes the lead in summer luxury. He takes the lead in summer luxury. He has never done with his delight for when tired out with fun he rests at ease beneath some pleasant wit. So this is a piece of music, a piece of picture, a pen portrait or picture description of a summer scene where the grasshopper is making some sounds which the poet says the music of the earth or the poetry of the earth. In simple meaning it states this is very simple poem so don't try to extract any hard meaning out of here. So the poetry of earth is never dead. The spontaneity or the continuity of the nature's music has been stated in the first line. So the first line it states that poetry of the art or the musicality of the art or the very rhythm of natural sound is continuous, never ending and everlasting. And that line or that sound can only be understood by such a person who has the notion of understanding the nature. If no such person is there, then the natural music should remain unheard. If there had been in ordinary time chipping of birds, the noises of birds or their musics are ever time sung or ever time listened by us. But there are sometimes these birds are tired they are not making any sounds even in that hot weather when all of the natural musical songsters are taking a rest and they are hiding in the cool set of leafy sets of trees they are cooling their bodies a voice is still sung a voice is still heard among the bushes from hedge to hedge from the bushes, from bushes to bushes, you will find that noise. The new born meat, even newly grown sharks, you will find that music. Who is making that music? That is the grasshopper. The grasshopper are making sounds at that time when the birds are not making any sounds at the hot summer time. He takes the lead. Now he becomes a leader at that moment that time. So continuity is there. Gar birds are taking rest, then the grasshopper take the lead. 
and in summer's luxury in profusion of summer time there is there is profusion in nature that is as if like that of spring time it give profusion the natural calmness natural profusion productive crops and the the middle fruitfulness everything is in full attraction at that moment and in that luxurious mood the grass pad is having that music and it is you you romantic ear has the full possibility of understanding and comprehending that music he takes the lead he in sama luxury he has never done with his delights so you will find that it is summer time he will be tired after singing a song or so but in nature's professions the grass part carry on and on the music is never ceasing ceaselessly he fires up the very music of art he has never done with his delight he is an everlasting delightful sort a spontaneous music comes within from heart as the words what says so his is the song which comes continuously and it comes from within so spontaneity is the another feature in nature that makes this art beautiful musical for when he tired out of fun he rest at is beneath some pleasant wit even when he is a tired a bit he takes a rest in the woods nearby but his sounds remain continuous ceaseless so that is the musicality that is the sounds that has been stated in the first eight lines octave part of this sonnet the poetry of art the sestet part it is quite maturely delivering a message that is the continuity of musicality of art art music is ceaseless art music is spontaneous art music is like that of a continuous progressive journey of the sounds of your soul in fact there are sounds everywhere you have to detect those sounds you have to understand comprehend those sounds and you have to decipher the musicality out of that sounds being a romantic you must have to find out the root of being musical the poetry of art ceasing never the line has been repeated twice it says that art's music is ceaseless it never end the art's poetry or the poetry of the art is never ending if grass over is there then there is on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence just contrary the atmosphere from summer it's winter so when there is lone winter evening when there is frosty weather when there is barren homes and barren outside even that chill winter seasons the fireplace or the stove is some sort of alive because the crickets are hiding in that place and making some buzzing noises that noise is being heard by the passers by or the fellow dwellers of that home and he will feel that even there is some frozen wintry as in the darkling thaws of hardy you will find hardy is hearing the thrush bird's voice shrill voice which is making a promising note for the coming century in this season so here the voice of the crickets are making some appeal to the nature or making a continuous journey of the music that kids is propounding with or propagating with so here the music of the art is being continued the baton from the grasshopper it has been handed to 
cricket and that cricket is hiding on the stove there thrills the cricket song in warm increasing ever so warm even though there is chill even though there is frozen wintry outside as well as from inside but you can feel warmth in your soul in your heart by hearing the voices of those cricket and you will feel that nature has its own music resounding and it is, it is your understanding of that that makes you a proper advocacy of understanding the nature so nature mother is there with her music and it is you that can have the possibility of making that audible to you otherwise you will be a dull one as watford has said in several of his poems in the concluding two lines in the sestet kids is saying that and seems to one in drowsiness half lost kids has the obsession with that of euthensia as you all know a drowsy numbness pains his heart all the time kind of stupor or sleepy state or the very pain that he is gone through the physical ache that he is suffering his illness is in reference so even a drowsiness or a drowsy half lost that feeling or a sleepy state that makes him a kind of a, a alert to the real to the dreamy reality of the surrounding and he forgets the very physical or the very uh, earthly pains that he is passing through as i have told you that the person uh, john kids is having some physical ailment as well as his personal losses of his brother and his poor relationship with his fanny brown his beloved so the the ultimate pains that he is passing through can be minimized only by the hearing of that music of art the musicality of art the, or the poetry of art the gas of art among some grassy hills so one can have that references of or the continuity of that singing from gasopar to cricket and that is made possible that somewhere somewhere that in the grassy hills gasopar is now in mute mode is hiding but in his drowsiness in his sleepiness he is must probably hearing the music of cricket and continue its music in the next year in the summer time so the cycle heat states from grasshopper to cricket to cricket to grasshopper the cycle of the arts music continues and that is the very music or the circle of arts music so a person who is musical in his heart a person who is in full understanding of the nature can comprehend that continuity of the music otherwise not so i think you have understood poetry of art by john kids and if there is any questions you can just pop up here and ask me i will try my best to answer you so like share and comment and obviously subscribe thank you